The Irish Cart Grand Prix at Nuts Corner is one of the highlights of the year for the ground skimmers in this spectacular sport. RPM at the ultimate event, Ayrton Senna, Michael Schumacher, Eddie Irvine, well not quite. We are at the Irish Karting Grand Prix and make no mistake about it, there are young drivers here today who have definite aspirations to be serious racing drivers. So look out, we could be looking at future champions. Steps on the way to Formula One come as early as eight years of age when you join the cadets. 60cc, two stroke engines, centrifugal clutch, and serious ambitions. Let me introduce you to a karting veteran. This is Ricky Gordon, and he's been racing now for two years. Ricky, what age are you? I'm 10 years old. 10 years old, and you started at eight? Um, yeah, I started at eight. Now, tell me what you've won. Uh, roughly how many races? About 10, 20 races and I've won the NC Nations champion and the Easter main. And what do you want to do when you grow up? Formula One driver. Without question. <laughs> yeah. I've been picked for the Northern Ireland team, um, third in the Northern Ireland Championship and I'm, I think I'm third or fourth in the Ulster Cup. That's a tremendous list of successes. Um, Obviously this is the start of the road to Formula One, is, is that your ultimate ambition? Yes, everyone's ambition to get to Formula One eventually. And who would be the driver you'd most like to emulate? Um, Michael Schumer. So what do you worry about when you're sitting on the grid there, or you're coming up to the grid? You're scared of getting racked in the first corner. You get through the first corner then what? Head goes down and get on with it? Yeah. What about the wet, do you worry about that? No, I'm usually pretty good in the wet. So you look forward to the wet? Yeah. Many great champions, you know, have uh, been good in the wet, like Rubens Barrichello and people like that. Yeah. So what do you do from here? What what happens after cadets? I go to, if it comes in, a mini max. Yeah. And then? And then I go to the junior max after a year in the mini max. And who's going to pay all the bills for this? My dad. <laughs> You're a lucky boy. Samantha, what's a lady like you doing in a rough game like this? <laughs> but motorsport is in the family, isn't it? Yep. Tell me all about that. My uncle's rallying and my daddy likes motorbikes. Right. And your uncle is, is very famous in the rallying, isn't he? Yep. Mr. Sideways. <laughs> Mr. Entertainment, Glen Allen. Yep. And do you go sideways yourself? Wee bit. And so the cadets line up for the grand final and the chance of winning that GP plate. And alongside me, very experienced karting commentator John Galloway. Here they go! I'm over the line for the first line and it's English visitor Scott Jenkins who needs NC. Ricky Gordon was on pole with Stuart Linus just behind him. He slipped back to third but it's our English visitor who leads at the end of the paddock straight and into the chicane for the first time. A whole pack of cadets following him through. Jenkins leads is Garvin McGowan, number 64, who's come up into second. Then we Samantha Tom, that young lady in third. And those little 60cc carts with the foot flat to the board and already we've got somebody out in front making quite an impression. Jenkins, I can see Linus and Gordon trying to move through. Joel Mulholland there as well. Philip Allen is 19, but it's Scott Jenkins who leads Garvin McGowan second. Samantha Tom is third. Then we had Linus and Ricky Gordon, that's 17. Linus behind him, NC the national champion, or nation champion, Ricky Gordon. Then Joel Mulholland, 77. And NC there will be a little bit disconcerted at being so far back down in fifth place at the moment, but he certainly is one to watch. Ricky Gordon, watch this little guy just carve his way through the field. The next on his list, Samantha Thurman. That won't be an easy one. It certainly won't, Alan, because Samantha gives nothing to these 22 young men that she's out there with, and that's Ricky Gordon just slipping through on the inside to prove me wrong, but we'll watch Ricky as he tries to make an impression on Scott Jenkins. Garvin McGowan going extremely well in second. Behind him is Stuart Lyon 
Linus. Stuart Linus, another danger man, somebody to really look out for there, number 17. And he's actually got ahead of Samantha now, so he's slipped up a place. Yes, Linus is up, but Ricky Gordon has passed him as well, and Ricky glancing back over his shoulder is now ahead of Stuart Linus and sending off in pursuit of Garvin McGowan. Jenkins still leads, Samantha Tom is slipping back slightly in fourth. But that's our English visitor, 43, Scott Jenkins, who leads. Garvin McGowan still holding second. And here comes Gordon for second, and Gordon goes second on the NC cart. Behind him, now is McGowan. Linus is still in fourth place. Trying to find a way past McGowan as well. Jenkins still leads. Gordon second, McGowan third, Linus four. And these three really battling it out, but possibly holding themselves up a little bit as the leader gets away. And as you can just see him leaving out of this one, but 64, he's a goner now, he's going to go back. Garvin McGowan, he's really blown it. Yes, that was Garvin McGowan who went wide at Paddock Corner, Allen and Linus and Gordon coming through. And as you said, they were perhaps holding each other up slightly as they got embroiled in this battle. And Scott Jenkins was sneaking away, but now they can concentrate on catching him. You can see Stuart Linus' hand down on the engine there, perhaps adjusting something as he... It tucks in behind Ricky Gordon once more. And we've jumped ahead and you can see that gap has come right down. In fact, we've got a new leader. Ricky Gordon has gone from, what was he, fifth or sixth place, the beginning of this race, right up into the lead. And taken with him, another multiple champion there, Stuart Linus. Yes, it's Ricky Gordon who started in the front row, had a poor start to this race, but has come right through the field, the young Portland known driver. On the outside of him is Stuart Linus, in third place now is Scott Jenkins. He probably wonders where these two young Ulster men have come from. But he's certainly trying to find a way past them once more. Gordon now leads Jenkins, he's back up into second at the Herpin. Linus is still in third, they're opening a gap on the rest of the field. I can tell you that Samantha Tom is still hanging on there in fourth and she's not finished with this race as yet. So the Bristol driver in second place at the moment, he'd been the early leader and he's far from giving up here. He's riding the fight and in this Ulster sandwich at the moment as they come down into Paddock for one time again. 17 on the outside, Stuart Linus. And challenging now, the Bristol man, but he can't just get the nose of that card inside or can he? Yes, he's gone up into second. And it's Ricky Gordon who still leads. I actually raced against his grandfather, would you believe, Alan? And uh, Stuart Linus in second, you can see some Samantha Tom still is there in fourth and hanging on, but it's NC Ricky Gordon who leads Stuart Linus in second, Jenkins in third as they swing into the horseshoe once more. Everyone glancing back over the shoulder and uh, they know there's still a, a lot of racing to be done here as yet. And uh, Jenkins has come a long way to race this weekend and he would love to take a victory away, but it's still Portland owns Ricky Gordon who leads Stuart Linus in second. These two fight it out most of the season around the Ulster circuits and they're great friends as well, and, uh, but do not give an inch of force on the circuits. So Stuart Linus there, looking very threatening at the moment. Stuart Linus staying right in the slipstream of that nation's champion, the English driver, driver I should say, looking on and diving down the inside. Linus goes to the lead and takes it. There was almost three abreast going in to get that time, Alan, and I know they can't get three of them there in the line, but they certainly did try. And Linus has made a mistake, he went right there, he's handed, he's gone from first to third, we've seen that a couple of times this weekend. Yes indeed we have, and I think that was a result of that three abreast at the top of the hill, they all went into the herp and Linus went in there far far too quickly, so he went through the compression, went right out on the rough stuff on the outside, but he's back there once again, right up behind Scott Jenkins, Gordon still leads, that's Ricky Gordon, Scott Jenkins, and Stuart Linus, side by side once more through panic. Jenkins now going back into the lead. Remember, he was the early leader, so the Englishman back into the lead. And there's a battle further down the field. Number 30 there, Stephen Glass. Probably a little bit upset that he's not riding the hunt today. Yes, that's Stephen Glass and Garvin McGahn. There's Stephen Glass who's been going very, very well this season, but he's not having the best of races in this one. You can see him trying to urge the cart along there. Carl Sterling getting huffed out a little bit. We're back with the leaders, however, and pulling away now, Stuart Linus. Stuart Linus in the Tony Cart with a bit of an advantage at the moment. In fact, the biggest advantage we've seen, I think, uh, virtually throughout the race. These two are tussling up, and there is the uh, national, what, the champion saying, hey, let's get on with it. Let's not fight with each other. Don't let this guy get away. Yes, indeed. That's exactly what uh, young Ricky Gordon was saying to Scott Schenk, is that Linus is getting away from us. Let's not fight together. Let's stay Linus and Stern and try and pull him back in again, because Stuart Linus has pulled out an amazing lead over the last lap or a lap and a half after being out on the curbs and back in third almost a lap and a half ago and there he's hopping the curbs once more and that might give 
I found this to Gordon and... He's off! He's stopped! He's off the course! Unbelievable! The man who had such an enormous lead, or the boy I should say, now right out of it. But uh, I think he's going to get going again, but it's all over as far as victory is concerned here today. Yes, I think he's just winded, Alan. In fact, there he is going once again as the leaders come up behind him at the top of the hill. Stuart Lennon is quite okay. Ricky Gordon leads. And in second place behind him lies Scott Jenkins and uh, in third now is Samantha Tom and Samantha is inching closer and closer to them as they keep this battle going ahead of her. So it's an Anglo-Irish battle uh, right to the flag now. Is it going to be Ricky Gordon in no uh, card number 15 normally but of course with the NC plate on here today. Bar 43 the English visitor right behind him. There's absolutely nothing in it. Wonderful racing from the Cat Pets Alan. One of my favourite classes always from us an exception here and these two having a tremendous battle. Gordon glancing one side and the other as they come into part of the corner they flick the curve on the outside drift wide and down the short straight to the right hand and then leads to the chicane, Ricky Gordon still leads, Scott Jenkins behind him, Samantha Tom is third, and I think she's still closing on them slightly, as they climb the hill once more. And where else could you learn uh, motor racing techniques like this from such an early age? You really have to be at this, almost from the age of eight, to have any chance of becoming a future champion. There they're learning slipstreaming, there they're learning racecraft, there's a battle down the middle of the field, still waged at all points. And of course you work your way up to the front, and these are the two at the front. There's a change at the front, it's Scott Jenkins who's back in front, Alan. I think that happened somewhere out of our sight, but he's back at the head of the field once more. Ricky Gordon is second, Samantha Tom is still closing on them in third. I doubt if she could find a way past, but you certainly could not tell this young lady that as they come down to the flag. It's just going to be Jenkins, it's not. Ricky Gordon comes past unbelievably on the outside, right at the front of the flag. Junior TKM, the second rung on the racing ladder on that steep climb to Grand Prix stardom. Only a few years ago, Alan McNeish raced here, and we certainly have a crop of young talent around today. I uh, won the Five Nations Championship about three weeks ago there in Junior TKM, and I haven't really been that great last year. We had a bit of bad luck this last year, but I'm racing the British Championships this year. And we're doing really good in that. And Chris, you've had uh, a lot of success too. Yeah, we won this event last year, so pressure's on, they won it again. <laughs> I yeah, won the Ulster Championship in both classes at the start of the year at Easter. I won the Five Nations last year and Lawrence beat us to it this year. But it's been doing pretty well this year and we're leading the championship so it's going well. And I presume that you all three of you have serious ambitions in motorsport? If I had the money we would. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Maybe Formula Ford or a punk rock star or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, her Grand Prix star and rock star, it's open to drivers of 12 to 16 years of age. They use a 100cc tuned two-stroke engine, centrifugal clutches and controlled tyres. And here they go. Look out for national champion Lawrence Ball with the NC plate, who leads at the moment. Chris Irwin's in there. 24 Ryan McGuinness is in there among the pack. It's Bo, Gurley, Irwin, Glover, Lusty, Clyde as they go through the chicane. The local lad continues to lead from Newtonard's driver Jonathan Gurley, but the battle for third is really intense between defending champion Chris Irwin, Lawrence Ray Lusty and Kalinsky's Jamie Glover. And here comes that man again, no change up front. As the two leaders now continue to pull away, Chris Irwin gets back third place in this fabulous fight with Lusty and Glover. It's still Bowl and Gurley. But Raymond Lusty in the Project One cart is back in third. It's a busy weekend now for the Lone Ends driver as he's also contesting the Junior Max class. Lawrence is having a great year as he's won both the Junior TKM and Max classes and the Five Nations Championship at Nuts Corner this summer and could repeat that feat today. Keith Forsyth and uh, Dallin Davidson are having a good tussle for ninth spot. But it's Lawrence Bowl all the way with Johnny Gurley staying in touch to the finish and Ray Lusty fending off Chris Irvin and Johnny Clyde for that fight for third place. The age group for Junior Rotex Max is between 13 and 16 years and they have 125cc sealed engines with restricted carburetors. 
The tax match underway with Ryan McGuinness tucking in behind another English visitor. That's Oliver Turvey who leads this one on the opening lap. Someone out on the gravel at Paddock Corner on the first lap, but it's Turvey who leads. That's Lawrence Bowl once again on the end sealer in fourth. Turvey leads McGuinness. That's first and second. Through the chicane for the first time. A whole crop of road tax matches. Climb the hill. McGuinness goes to the inside of Turvey at the top of the hill and takes the lead, I think, down through the compression as they head for the Herpin for the first time. Yes, Ryan McGuinness leads. Turvey second. 15 and 3rd behind him, Lawrence Bull. 15 is uh, Trevor, Trevor Hayes. Hayes. Uh, yes, Trevor Hayes and uh, weather not good for this one. And of course, quite a different setup in the cards for the range of the drive. There's a lot of adjustment you can do in these quite advanced machines. Yes, conditions are quite difficult now. It's uh, we better if it was truly wet, but it's just patchy bits of damp around the circuit. But uh, these young men, have, a lot of them have come through the cadet class that we saw early, earlier on. and. Uh, they are now in Junior Road Tax Max, which is a very, very quick class indeed and becoming very, very popular in the province and elsewhere. That's Lawrence Bowl once more. Scott Taggart just behind him, then Trevor Hayes. Scott Taggart moving up another position. Hayes on the inside of him once again. And Hayes, in fact, on the grass, unfortunately, and losing a lot of ground. The rest of the field coming streaming past. And somebody else in trouble there, number 33, that's Richard Tannehill. Richard Tannehill, that's a famous name in Ulster Motorsport. Yes, indeed it is. Not sure of the connection, but I'm sure there is one, Plum. We can see 41 moving up there, Stephen Rutherdale as well. So Rutherdale uh, right in the fight there. There's a tremendous tussle going on between him and number 83, just coming down the road, Scott Taggart there from the uh, Glenavy. William Cochran, 111 behind Taggart as well, and now I think in front of Taggart, that's Mrs. Bowl watching her son as Ryan McGinnis still holds the lead. Young Lawrence is back in third position, Oliver Turvey is still in second. Turvey comes from the Penrith area and races at the Cumbrian Car Club at Ryra, up on the mountains in the Lake District. But he's at Nuts Corner this weekend and in second place, just behind Ryan McGinnis. So McGinnis, and uh, there's a lot of... Uh problems in the McGuinness family recently. His mother was in a very serious road accident and she was absolutely delighted that her son is out there leading this important final at the moment. Yes indeed she will now. I know she's now on the road to recovery but it, I think it will be a slow business but Ryan McGuinness is trying to do her proud and young Ryan is going extremely well at the head of the field. Darren Spool, one of his great rivals from Ulster, now in second and in third place, Oliver Turvey, bowl on the inside of McGuinness at the top of the hill as they come to gate. And it's Lawrence Bowl on the NC cart who now leads down through the compression. McGuinness behind him in second, Oliver Turvey in third. McGuinness goes on the inside of Bowl at the Herpin once more. And I don't know where he found that space, but he got through very neatly indeed as they leap down to the horseshoe once more. McGuinness leads, Bowl is second, Turvey is still in third. And as we get into about mid-distance in this race, you can see that it's all down to these three riders. And a tremendous tussle it is indeed. Down the Dundrod Strait, towards Paddock Corner, Bull looks for a gap on the inside, but concerns himself about Turvey behind him, who is closing once more, decides not to go for that inside gap. But it's McGuinness who still leads into the right hander that leads to the chicane. And through the chicane once more, McGuinness leads, bowl second, Turvey third. They go up the hill now towards the highest point of the circuit at Gate Corner. It's always slippy at the top of the hill. That's why they're right out on the rough stuff on the outside there and down through the compression to the Herpin once more. Bow going for the inside, but he's going to be wrong-footed if McGuinness can brave it out uh, for the right-hander, and that's just exactly what he's done. And just as we saw in the uh, cadets earlier on uh, this afternoon, this is an Anglo-Irish battle, and the Englishman just forcing his way there quite correctly into second place. Yes, battle is the right word, and Lawrence Bull now heads. The English driver Turvey is second, Oliver Turvey in second, Ryan McGuinness is suddenly back to third, and... Uh, well, Ryan will certainly not give up. We can expect him to battle back in a very determined fashion. Turvey goes for the lead at gate, and Turvey now leads. And Turvey, yeah, if you do that, the problem is you can come out of that corner rather slowly, and uh, Bo knows all about that, and goes down the inside, retakes the lead, the both of them gone wide, McGuinness gets it back, and he's gone from third to first in one manoeuvre. Yes, McGuinness came right through on the inside that time, and uh, he's sweeping round through the horseshoe. Bowl is second, Turvey is third. And what a clean fight this is too, it has to be said. This is tremendous racing at close quarters, at high speed. And these young men, of course, a little bit older than in the cadets that we saw earlier, but they have really matured in motor racing terms. 
Yes, and most of them have come through the cadet classes over the last few years and uh, now taking to this Rotax Max class with a bang, you might say. Thankfully, there haven't been many bangs in this one, Plum, but very, very clean racing indeed. Ryan McGuinness leads once more. Lawrence Pole in second. Third is Oliver Turvey. They're down there in Trot Street. You saw the board there saying three laps to go. They'll have seen it as well as they sweep into Paddock Corner. And it's Lawrence Pole who still leads. Pole in second, Turvey in third. That's Alan Smith, number 11. And Tom Glass, unfortunately, off on the grass in cart number 30, but McGuinness still leads. Lawrence Bowles tucks right in behind him, has a look at the inside that time, but there's no gap at Paddock Corner. Turvey's right up behind the two Ulster drivers as they turn into the chicane once more. Ryan McGuinness still leads, cart number 24. Lawrence Bowles right behind him, and Oliver Turvey alongside Bowles. Bowl goes on the inside and McGuinness at the top of the hill. Can he find a gap? Turvey goes there as well, and the two of them come past. McGuinness at the top of the hill as they head down into the compression. Bowles suddenly finds a few yards. And bad, bad news for McGuinness there because he got held up by Turvey. And really, the, for the second time in this race, McGuinness has gone from first to third. And that is not good because the laps are running out. Yes, I think they've got a couple left in this one, but Ryan McGuinness found that gap before. I wonder, can he do it again? Lawrence Bowl now leads Turvey second. The very determined Ryan McGuinness will be third. He's on the outside line as he comes down the Dundraw Street. He met perhaps that thinks that's the quicker one. Stays off the curves where the other two jump across the curves with reps. You lose a little bit of momentum. Turvey leads, Bowl is second, McGuinness is third through the chicane. Are we going to get an English victory here? It's looking like it at the moment. Up they come now to the gate corner. Turvey taking a quite a late, quite a very fast line in and a little bit slow out. He ran out of road there and Bowl is right with him. Bowl in the slipstream now. Bowl goes down the inside at the hairpin and gets him. And but then both wide and a little bit of a nudge there. I think as McGuinness went through, that's the second time he's done it today. Yes, indeed. I don't know where Ryan got that from because he came right through the inside. The other two were touched and then one of them went out of the curb. Ryan McGuinness shot through on the inside. He's round on the horseshoe loop. And he's done it just at the right time. Is he going to be able to hold on to the checkered flag? It's going to be a wonderful afternoon for the McGuinness family. He's absolutely delighted. What a race. Brian, congratulations. What a race. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, it was anybody's race, like the last three laps, I was trying to conserve my tyres during the race, got my quickest lap in lap one, then the last three laps the tyres were just shot and all three of us were just broadside nearly every corner, it was anyone's race. I thought it was all over because I went in the gate corner, it was slippy and greasy and I just broke too late trying to pull away and then the two of the boys got by me and I was about five lengths behind and thought that was it and then I seen Lawrence going to the inside and I thought Right, I'll get the two of these before the herpin. Senior in karting means far from ancient, as you're considered to be an elder lemon in this sport at the age of 16. Supercarts are serious bits of kit, and just like in the racing and rallying equivalents of today, as with World Rally cars and Formula One, the laptop junior is very much in evidence. But we, however, start at the more affordable end of the senior karting market. Pro kart in many ways are considered as the bargain basement in the senior karting classes. These machines are essentially twin engine version of fun karts and they require a technique all of their own. Pro karts is all about smoothness, consistency. It's not much because a lot of the bigger classes just throw the kart into the corner. You need to be smooth around the corner and get your power out onto the straight to get past people. I find it's the most competitive class. Uh, it's cheap, uh, easy to run, uh, very tight racing and you can come out on a Saturday morning and basically pull the cords and away you go. Around the first corner of the pro cart on this opening lap with Macaulay, Wilson and Robinson at the front and heading across the short street to Paddock we have a spinner there on the opening lap but it's Wilson who leads on cart C coming through the chicane for the first time and starting to climb the hill. Wilson from Jason Morrow, Michael Macaulay too there in third. Rest of the pack very tight together as we often expect from the pro cart classes. 
And uh, pass up at the top there, it's number three, Jason Morrow going through, but he's been challenged by number two on the inside, Michael McCauley. Michael McCauley figuring very strongly here, and look at number 44, the multiple champion of the past number of years, Robert Robinson. Yes, Robert Robinson right up there, and McCauley, who we saw in the interview a few moments ago, trying to put what he told us into practice and heading for the lead on the first lap, as indeed he does, down the Dundrod straight for the first time, McCauley leads, Robinson now up into second, Wilson in third. And remember these carts are very standard twin engines in the back and you really can't afford to get the cart too sideways. It's all about neat and tidiness and that exactly is what Michael McCauley is doing at the moment and he's making a break. Yes indeed he is. Alan he's pulling right away as he goes down through the compression this time. I can see number six up there as well. The pursuing bunch getting rather tied up and that's allowing McCauley to get away. It's uh, Wilson who leads the charge behind him. Tim Kerr is up there as well, number 37. Wilson and Jason Morrow fighting out second, third. Morrow has it at the moment from Wilson. He glances back at Robson and he comes back into the picture as well. And all the time, Michael McCauley is stealing away at the head of the field. Quite physical machines to drive these. You notice that the drivers are very much hunched over the wheel. That's because the steering is very heavy, very physical, and a lovely move there. Look at 44 going through, right through the middle. How did he find that gap? I do not know where he got that one from, Alan, but he got through that time as it came to Shakir, and that was Robert Robinson once more. Macaulay glancing back over his shoulder. He's wondering where the opposition is, I think. Robinson has got a slight lead now over Derek Wilson now in third. Sean Doherty, number six, right in there in the pack two. 37 there, we see. That's Tim Kerr. Look out for him. And what a fight. There's 96 there. That's uh, Mark Harvey. He's right in the middle of it as well. Yes, Mark Harvey up in the battle. There's a great bunch of them in pursuit of Michael McCauley. Robinson is slightly ahead of Tim Kerr. Then Wilson. Harvey's there as well. Number 30 in the battle as well is Nigel Stewart. Wilson in the C plate, but we're looking at 96 there, just going through. Mark here, Harvey. And a tremendous battle. They're probably all holding it up a little bit. And this is, of course, giving Michael McCauley way out front a tremendous advantage. Well, he'll be absolutely delighted with this. He has the odd glance back over his shoulder. We noticed that he is still, I'm sure, wondering where the opposition is. But they can assure them they're back there, but they're not quite in touch. Perhaps if they concentrated on staying line ahead, they might get back with them. But he's quite happy where he is. Robinson and Kerr still fighting out the minor positions. Kerr on the inside as they come to the gate corner at the top of the hill and down through the compression once more. So that's Tim Kerr now up into second, but not for long because Robinson's back. And Wilson, number six, is in there too. And the former champion on the sea plate, that's Wilson. Yes, that's uh, Sean Doherty, six there, who's just ahead of Wilson. Wilson's gone back a couple of positions on that lap. Jason Morrow's still there as well, number three. The rest of the pro kart field just behind them. Such close racing from this class. It's been a great success, the province, over the years. And it's becoming much more popular, I think, with spectators and everyone alike. And Robinson's caught out on the outside there. He loses two places. And number six just coming through there. Sean Doherty now up into third. There's Robinson fighting away in fourth place. Then we've Jason Morrow, three behind Robinson. We featured in the early stage of this one and certainly isn't out of it yet. Tim Kerr going steadily and well. Doherty behind him, who's always a front runner in the pro card class these days. Kerr looking back over his shoulder. Doherty, who's right in underneath his back bumper. Very well positioned now for the first corner. Can he get down the inside? He can bully your way through usually there. He doesn't even have to. Tim Kerr been very gentlemanly on that occasion. Yes, he left him plenty of room and they dash across the short straight that leads the chicane and he comes back up to challenge him once more. Kerr up behind Doherty. There's Jason Morrow, as he says, still in the picture. His side uh, panel showing obvious signs of contact in the early stages of this race. Perhaps I think that's both panels looking. there, John, have had a contact. He must have been squeezed at one point. Yes, indeed he must. We had him very much featuring in the early stages and we lost him for a lap or two, so perhaps that's the reason why. Sean Doherty then, at the moment, in second place. And then uh, anybody's third place at the moment. In fact, Jason Curran just slipping through there, making his narrow card very narrow. That's Jason Morrow, yes, proudly wearing his Northern Ireland overalls, you see, as he will represent the province in the Five Nations Championship down in Cork very soon. Tremendous racing here. These three now getting really tied up. Oh, we've got somebody off into the kitty litter. But no problems at all for Michael McCauley. Michael McCauley way out in front. In second place now, with a bit of a gap to Sean Doherty. And then third place is anybody's. 
Yes, it's uh, Jason Morrow who's still holding third. The battle's still not resolved. Remember, Robert Robinson's still there as well. And Derek Wilson on card C. There's Tim Kerr just in behind Jason Morrow as well. Oh, I'm afraid that's uh, 59. That's John Laffin retiring. But it gives us a chance to move ahead again at 37. That's Kerr going down the inside. He's done that on a number of occasions. He's really needed that corner. Robinson, once again, a major move as he goes into the chicane. Yes, Robinson right through on the inside. He got both of them that time on that at the chicane, and he's charging, trying to get back to McCauley, who's still way out of the head of the field, Michael McCauley. Sean Doherty still holding second. There's Tim Kerr in third, and there's Robinson in fourth, pursued by Derek Wilson and Jason Morrow. Morrow slipping down the inside again. And Morrow, I'm looking at Wilson. Wilson really crouched over the wheel there. And as I say, this, you would imagine in a little cart that it'd be light steering. It's far from it. It nearly pulls the, your arms out of your sockets. Yes, driving a pro cart is hard work. They're much heavier than standard carts, and uh, the two engines in the back making the whole outfit a much more difficult for a proposition at times to drive and they really have to work at them and keep them smooth as well to get them quickly around this circuit. Their lap time's very impressive here today for the Pro Card class. And that's Robert Robinson once more going through. Going wide there is Wilson and into the kitty litter and losing a lot of ground. Derek Wilson that time unfortunately he was driving a very good race indeed. Michael McCauley still leads. 96, this count him, that's Mark Harvey, we reckon he's been lapped. Number 6, uh, that's uh, Sean Doherty in second place, just putting up his uh, two fingers to uh, tell him to confirm with his pit crew that that's the position that he's in. And here's the battle for third, still raging. Our fourth and fifth. Michael McCauley still leads. I think Doherty was counting off the laps that time as well as his grid position, or his race position, and he's still hanging in there. Look at this battle, Nigel Stewart there, with tremendous pressure now from another Macaulay, Andrew Macaulay. Yes, these two have been battling out the, some of the midfield positions through the race, and uh, typical of pro kart racing, the racing goes all the way down the field these days, right to the tail end, and that's our race leader. Michael McCauley still safe and secure at the head of the field. That's Sean Doherty in second. Tim Kerr, 37 in third. Fourth still, Robert Robinson, 44. Then Jason Morrow. Then 30 and 55, Stuart and Michael McCauley, or Andrew McCauley. Well, that's where the battle is at the moment. Back in fifth, but no problems at all for Michael McCauley, who takes another win in a superb season. And he's followed by Doherty Kerr, Robinson and Morrow. The senior TKM final is a Philip Clements benefit from start to finish. Joe Lawn, Richard Buddy, and Justin Davis follow him through the first chicane. But Clements is in a class of his own. And Lawn's viciously under steering cart cannot cope with Clements' mastery of the wet conditions. Lawn is eventually disqualified, so Justin Davis and Peter McMullen follow Clements home. It's big circuit, big speeds, and a rolling start for the 125 and 210 Nationals, the juniors of the gearbox class. Dean Jackson leads from Gary Agnew and Matthew Campbell, with Everett McDowell in fourth place. Jackson looks secure as Agnew and Campbell dice for second. Gary Agnew caves in under pressure and spins away his chances in the 125 final of the Irish Kart Grand Prix. Now young Matthew Campbell is a clear track and a clear target in Dean Jackson. The speed of this young man in Kart 27 is very impressive. And he reels in Dean Jackson as he hits the front at the end of the back straight. Like father, like son, it looks like the Campbells are going to be in the trophies again. And Matthew hangs on to become one of the youngest ever gearbox winners. Despite a missed gear change in the very last corner. The supercars of Formula E's are the fastest thing in the circuit and faster than all but the very top international racing classes. 
Multiple champion Colin Minari leads Johnny Wilkinson and Peter Deary with Liam Fox and the Charles Hurst cart right in the centre of the action. These supercarts are travelling at over 110 miles an hour in this fast nuts corner circuit. Minari still leads, but Wilkinson is in trouble, letting Richard Jewett into third, and Fox fighting a big slide here. No luck today, I'm afraid, for Roger Boyce, number 70. And indeed, no time for lunch for Colin Minari, as the equally experienced Monaghan driver, Peter Deary, is right behind with Fox now in third, and Jewett coming under increasing attention from Kieran Beaton. Minari and Deary have years of experience at the top level of the sport, and the Southern driver has judged this one beautifully. Peter slips past on the straight. But Colin must be in trouble as Peaton is now up into second and challenging Deary. Kieran has left it to the last. But that's when it counts. But the radiator on Beaton's cart is loose. Can it hold on? Peaton leads, but you can never expect a Deary to give up. And in one of the closest finishes of the weekend, Peaton is just going to hold on from Peter Deary, who puts in a mighty challenge on the line. Since the introduction of Rotex Max in 2000, it's been the fastest growing class in the country. An outlier of under 3,000 pounds will put you at the sharp end of the sport. It's been a great class, I think. Um, in the finals today we're on 30 carts, um, it's a tough class, a lot of equal drivers and uh, the best man will win at the end of it. And it is affordable? It is, it's not too, not too bad to run, um, the engines are all sealed, it's a sealed class, um, you know, nobody can tamper with them, the unfortunate thing is that uh, you, know, you have to send it away then to somewhere to, to get it rebuilt and that, so that's the only expense in it. And the Rotex Max gets underway, their big final. In the lead, Mark McIver making a very good start. Gary Blair's right in there, Neville Bell, Brian McCart, and Jason Curran, the multiple champion. Look out for him in cart number one. What a tremendous final. This should be a very, very competitive class. It'll be led straight away by Mark McIver from Gary Blair and a lot of his friends who came through the junior classes and now into Rotex Max. And this tremendously competitive class, and we've lost a couple of them straight away. Oh, that looks like Frank McNellis is having a pretty damp weekend. McIver still leads from Blair, that's NC, the Five Nations champion Mark McIver stealing away slightly at the head of the field. The change for second, that's Neville Bell now 47 up to second, number one there is Jason Curran. Very much a front runner in this class, he was racing in Kuala Lumpur a little earlier in the year and he's challenging 62, Brian McCart, another young driver who came through the junior classes in the last few years. But I understand Jason Curran uh, driving a different cart this weekend, one that he's not too familiar with. Yes indeed, I'm not quite sure about it in the slightly damp conditions, although the track is drying slightly, but Jason certainly will be fighting. Neville Bell lost a couple of positions there, Curran moved up past him and Blair as Bell slid wild on that one, but we'll see him coming back I'm sure. You can't afford to make the slightest mistake in this type of competition. These really are super cars. They're sealed engines. You buy an engine for about £1,200. You can't touch it. Only the manufacturer can touch it. Or certain uh, uh, agents who are allowed to deseal the engine and check them out. And that makes it all the more affordable. They've also got electric starters, which makes it a little bit easier on the back when you're trying to push start a cart. Yeah, certainly on the pushers back. Maybe if these have been introduced a few years ago, I'd still be racing carts from, but... Fabulous, real success story and very, very fast. There we are, Mark McIver pulling away a little bit and just as we saw in the pro cards, the real battle is now for second place. And Brian McCartan is, who's up into second on card 62, the blue outfit there and going extremely quickly and chasing after McIver. That's Gary Blair, that very colourful yellow outfit. Just ahead of 47, Neville Bell, who comes from nearby Crumlin, very close to Nuts Corner. And Bell slips through the inside of Gary Blair, who's also a Crumlin driver, actually. Jason Curran, you can see in that bunch behind them. 
This is the real battle at the moment though. Neville Bell and Gary Blair. And out front, we've still got Mark McCarver. Now, can he maintain that advantage? But it looks like the Brian McCart is putting in the really fast times now and seems to be closing that gap a little bit. Yes, Brian McCart much, much closer than McIver down around the bottom end of the circle. He's drifted a little bit away again, but we see him close that gap, I'm sure. Gary Blair is still there in fourth. There's Philip Harkness at the back of the bunch with the NC plate as we've lost another one. Philip Harkness expected to do very well here on the Tony Cart. And uh, he's really closing in the IRL uh, plate there, you see, just gone up a place, slipped through very neatly there. Yes, that was Keith Bickerstaff, he slipped past that time, and Harkness, we can expect a challenge in the closing stages, I'm sure. McIver still leads in the ANC cart. McIver really hanging on the tremendous grip in these carts. In fact, uh, it's very, very sore on the back and be very sore on the ribs in these carts. You have to wear special protection. Well, they're all very fit, these young men, and they are very young, most of them in this class, and it certainly shows that Stephen Taylor. With Gary O'Neill in attendance with him, the little guys in the back of the field, and there's somebody in big trouble. 92, Lawrence Green. He must have been winded in that one. Yes, I think Lawrence is quite all right. It looked quite spectacular when he bounced off the tyres, but I think he's quite all right, Alan, and the leading battle still, that's Brian McCart still now, very much in contact with McIver. McCart really closed in. This is going to be a superb finish to this one. McCart is really closed in, and the others, it's all squashing down now as we come towards the finishing laps here. There's not too many laps, laps left to run. McIver still leads McCart in second. Bit of a gap before third, fourth, fifth and sixth. But they're still all there in with a chance. The condition's still a little bit damp in places. And it might well have a bearing on the closing stages. And McCart builds his challenge on McIver. And it could well be the course that some of these carts have been set up for the wet and some of them for the bone dry. There's quite a lot of adjustment you can do. You may not have any suspension in a cart, but it's all down to uh, the width of the track and all kinds of little tweaks that people have learnt over the years. Yes, indeed it is. It's Neville Bell, who's now the driver in third. You remember him from the early stage of this one when he's getting back there and he's pulling Gary Blair with him, number 32. They've been in close company for most of this race. McIver still leads, drifting wide, and that'll get McCart closer to him again, I'm sure. McCart just a little bit neater through the chicane that time. Bell still in third, Blair in fourth. Well, I wonder just what a condition McIver's tyres are in at this stage. He was uh, very, very fast in the opening laps of this race. Has he overcooked his tyres a little bit? Because it doesn't seem a problem for McCart now to close in a little bit. A really aggressive man though there is in fourth place. That's Gary Blair. He's desperately trying to get third at the moment. Yes, Gary driving the wheels of it behind 47 Neville Bell and uh, challenging. I remember him as a very young junior a lot of years ago. He's one of the smallest juniors in the class. He's much taller now and he's very competitive in this Rotax Max class. And there he is, right in behind Neville Bell. And then there's one teddy bear that hasn't been thrown out of the pram this weekend. As we move ahead again, and look at this. It's really closed up at the head of the field. What a superb Rotex Max race. Yes, indeed, as we come to expect from the Rotex classes. Tremendous competition, extremely quick. And just look at this, Bell and... Blair almost side by side as they head down the street that time and both closing on McCart. Blair goes through on the inside, right out on the curbs. So Blair up into third place now. And can he close in on the leaders? The third equally spaced, first, second and third. He's looking behind. He knows that Bell will probably fight back. This battle is far from over. There's Bell had a look back as well because he knows Philip Harkness is somewhere back in the group behind him as well. There's yellow flags out there as they come through the chicane. Somebody takes a bath there. Young Nicholas Mabin, 126 that time in the water. That's our race leader once more, Mark McIver, closing in on some of the, the tail-enders, and that might well have a bearing on this one. You might well bite your nails because this is far from over, and the back markers are going to play a part in all this. They've got to carve their way through the back markers, keep everybody, and look how it's closed things up. There's a couple off on the outside, not interfering with the leaders, though. Eight in France and uh, 38 Mark Hamilton, those two drivers who were off, and that's our race leader with McCart very much in contact now on Cart 62. Right up behind Mark McIver and Gary Blair still there as well. The yellow outfit of Blair behind them, the yellow suit closing in on our race leader as well, and McIver under a lot of pressure. Neville Bell four, and there's Harkness in five, Philip Harkness IRL. And Brian McCart now just looking for his opportunity. And look, he's obviously, there's no doubt about it that uh, McIver is probably holding these two up at the moment. Yes, he's certainly feeling the pressure. He was looking down one side and the other, and he contact a little bit of contact. 
contact there, but Gary Blair got that nose cone well and severely dented there as uh, McCart moved over, and McCart now challenging down the inside, has he found a gap? Yes indeed, this is McCart goes through on the inside, but McIver doesn't want to give it up, there's a little bit more contact, he loses a couple of positions, Neville Bell comes through and McCart leads down into the final corner, that leads to the straight, Bell hunched over the cart, makes a dive for the line, but it's just going to be Brian McCart who takes it from Neville Bell in Rotax Max. With Philip Harkness in third place, Blair fourth and McIver fifth.